we had matchmakers. Um, I was actually training for a marathon and working with a trainer at a gym in Oklahoma City. He also worked out at that gym. And I thought she was really cute, but um, the times that I saw her seemed to coincide with breaks from college. And so I thought, and she looked so young, I thought she was in college. And so I didn't ask my friend about her because I thought that would be weird. And one, one time I was running a marathon for a nonprofit and he noticed a poster on the wall and asked a question of my trainer and said, well, how did she do in that race? And he said, well, for her age group, she did pretty well. Well, he thought I was a lot younger than I was, or at least he still tells me that to this day. And I said, well, what is she like? Does she go to OU or what? Is she in college? And he just started laughing. And he goes, no, she's like two years younger than you are. And I was like, oh, wow. So I was excited because then I felt like I could, you know, talk to her. We have a really close-knit family. Uh, we try to spend a lot of time together. Um, our kids are really active. They play a lot of sports and we always go to their games and uh, we try to eat dinner as much as we possibly can together. It was a great Saturday. We all had our things we were excited about. My daughter Lily and I had the perfect day. We were going to the early 11 o'clock um, wicked performance at the Civic Center. And then like all mothers and daughters, we were going to the football game in Norman. We, we had our dresses and we had our football gear. So I thought, well, wait, let's check in with dad and bub um, between the theater and the football game. Just, hey, because we always talk and going in different directions, we wanted to connect. So I called and he said, I don't, you know, I, I don't feel very good. I have a really bad headache. And he'd kind of been seeing like these little things, like seeing things. His, his vision was starting to be really affected. So I put him in the car. I don't even remember driving to the ER, but we were met there by our friends of every specialty practically you can think of, and they were quickly helping us through the process of tests and, and you know, his doctor ordered tests and all these tests of things what we could think of that's making this really bad headache. And I think maybe because he was in such good shape physically, it wasn't as obvious. And I knew when one of his very best friends that was one of those physicians didn't come in to tell us the result, I, I kind of knew then that it wasn't great news. Um, so they shared with us um, that they, they found the carotid artery dissection and the chance of a massive stroke was really big. Um, so, wow. Just wow. I don't have a lot of deficits from the strokes that, you know, the, the strokes that I had. Um, you know, I have a, have a couple of toes that are numb and get a few tinglings now and then, but I don't have any paralysis or anything like that. So, I, and, and I know that, um, I know that I was very lucky in that regard because I know that people have had strokes and, you know, uh, the severity of their deficits afterwards are, you know, sometimes debilitating. I think that has inspired both of us to um, be involved like we have been with the Sweetheart Program and the Heart Association and to really just let people know to be aware of these things. If I, I really think if I had not been at the Sweetheart event that Sunday right after it happened and listened to Terry Bailey talk to us about how to recognize a stroke, I'm not sure I would have been as adamant. I said, I think my husband's had a stroke. We, we can't just sit here. I really feel blessed, first of all, blessed that uh, the stroke didn't take my life. I still get to do, you know, what I love to do. And, uh, And, yeah, still get to be around, you know, the people that I love. And, uh, you know, this happened three years ago, and, man, I would have missed a lot. At the end of the day, you know, it's February, and I have my Valentine. <laughs>